De Corvain syndrome. De Corvain syndrome is a stenosing tenosynovitis of the first dorsal compartment of the wrist. It's more common in the dominant wrist. It affects the first dorsal extensor compartment of the wrist, which contains the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis. They have variable anatomy, with the abductor pollicis longus having multiple slips and the extensor pollicis brevis have its own compartment. The extensor pollicis brevis is more dorsal than the abductor pollicis longus. Remember, this is the boundaries of the snuff box of the wrist. Remember, in the second compartment, there are the two tendons of the extensor carbiridialis longus and extensor carbiridialis brevis. The first compartment causes de Corvain syndrome. The relationship between the first compartment and the second compartment causes intersection syndrome. And the third compartment will contain the extensor pollicis longus. In de Corvain syndrome, there will be pain and the swelling over the radial side, the thumb side of the wrist. Pain is usually located at the base of the thumb and to the side of the wrist. It occurs due to inflammation, thickening, and stenosis of the synovial sheath. The condition is more common in women, and the patient will complain of pain with movement of the wrist, as well as swelling with tenderness over the styloid process of the radius. Activities that may cause the Corvain syndrome include twisting, wringing out with towels, hammering, skiing, racket sports, playing the piano, lifting heavy objects. The condition may also occur postpartum or post-traumatic. Differential diagnosis, CMC joint arthritis, arthritis of the basal joint, or thumb CMC, carbometacarbal joint. Another differential diagnosis is the intersection syndrome. Pain is felt on top of the forearm where the two muscles, the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis, cross over the underlying wrist tendons the extensor carbiridialis longus and brevis. In this case, the pain is located about 4 cm from the wrist joint. Another differential diagnosis is Wartenberg syndrome, which is compression of the superficial branch of the radial nerve. The pain is located about 8 cm proximal to the radial styloid. In this syndrome, there will be pain and prothesia on the dorsum of the hand with positive tenel sign. It is hard to differentiate between de Corvain syndrome and basal thumb arthritis. You do the Finkelstein test in de Corvain syndrome and you do the grind test for basal thumb arthritis. How do you do the Finkelstein test, the test used for de Corvain syndrome? The test is conducted by having the patient make a fist with the fingers closed over the thumb and the wrist is bent towards the little finger, ulnarly deviated. The hand is pulled so that the involved tendons are stretched, causing sharp local pain if injury and inflammation is present. Warn the patient before you do that test. Tell them what they should expect. This test may be very painful if the tendons are badly inflamed. How about the grind test for the basal thumb arthritis? By axial loading, pushing and rotating the thumb metacarbal bone, 
grinding may be felt within the joint, pain will be located on the volar aspect of the wrist. X-ray is really not indicated, however, it is advisable to get an X-ray of the hand to rule out basal thumb arthritis, which may coexist with ducal veins or may be the primary problem in the patient condition. Treatment Conservative treatment, rest, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, thumb spica splint, steroid injection. You treat it first with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications and immobilization with the thumb spica splint. And if that doesn't work, then you try steroid injection into the first dorsal compartment. Most cases improve with non-operative treatment. You will do surgical release of the ferris dorsal compartment after failure of non-operative treatment for six months. Recurrence of the pain and inflammation may occur after surgery. Steroid injection. Inject steroids into the tendon sheath of the ferris dorsal compartment with the rest over a rolled up towel. Surgery, surgical release of the first dorsal compartment of the wrist. Make the incision in the dorsal aspect of the wrist. Protect the radial sensory nerve. The abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis tendons are freed from the surrounding retinaculum and tendon sheath. Complete decompression of the ferris dorsal compartment includes any additional slips and additional compartments. The tendons may have separate compartments and each compartment should be identified and released. Pain may occur after surgery due to neuroma, inadequate decompression and release of the tendons, or instability and the scarring of the tendons. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.